This is an extraordinary message sent especially to you, a follower of our channel, and it comes with the sincerest wishes for prosperity. It reaches you through your connection with divine wisdom. If you trust in this celestial guidance that guides and protects you, subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notification bell and show your support. Let me share with you the most intriguing revelation of the world. Once the late Dr. Albert Schweitzer, a Nobel laureate, was interviewed in London and a journalist asked him, Doctor, what is the big issue with people today? The eminent doctor remained silent for a moment and then said, people simply avoid thinking. That's what I would like to talk about. We are living in a golden age, a moment so desired, dreamed of, and fought for by humans throughout centuries, yet now that we are here, we almost take it for granted. We, travelers on this journey of existence, inhabitants of regions where opportunities arise more often, are blessed. However, do you know what happens? Well, let's imagine a hundred individuals, all starting at the age of 25. Can you predict the fate of these individuals when they reach 65? These hundred individuals, all starting at 25, believe in their potential for success. If you approach any of them and ask if they want to achieve success, they will certainly answer affirmatively. You will see in them an enthusiasm for life, a gleam in their eyes, and a confident posture as if life were an exciting adventure. However, at 65, one will be prosperous, four will be financially independent, five will still be working, and 54 will be facing financial difficulties. Let's pause to reflect. Out of the hundred, only five achieve success. Type 555 if you have already achieved success. Why do so many fail? What happened to that sparkle they had at 25? What happened to the dreams, the hopes, the plans? And why is there such a noticeable discrepancy between what they aspired to achieve and what they actually accomplished? Type 777 if you have not yet achieved success. In this case, we will be sending our prayers for you. When we mention that about 5% achieve success, it's crucial to define what we mean by success, and here's the best description we can offer. Success is the continual advancement toward a worthy ideal. If someone is progressing toward a set goal and knows their destination, then that person is successful. On the other hand, if they're not, then they're a failure. Success is the constant evolution toward a worthy ideal. The renowned psychologist Rallo May penned a remarkable book titled The Individual's Journey in Search of Self. In this work, he argues that the opposite of courage in our society isn't cowardice but conformity. And here lies the crux of the current dilemma, it's conformity. People behave like everyone else without understanding why, without having a clear purpose. Now, consider this, in the United States, at this very moment, there are over 18 million people aged 65 or older, and the vast majority of them are facing financial difficulties. They rely on external assistance to meet their basic needs. We learn to read by age 7, we learn to support ourselves by 25, and often, by that age, we're not just supporting ourselves but also supporting a family. However, at 65, we still haven't learned to achieve financial independence in the most prosperous nation in history. Why do we settle? And the problem is that we're aligning ourselves with the wrong group the 95% who don't achieve success. Comment 4040 if you identify with this group. So why do these people conform? Well, they don't actually know. They believe that their lives are shaped by circumstances, by events around them, by external forces. They are externally directed individuals. 
Once a survey was conducted with various workers and these individuals were asked why they work, why they get up in the morning. 19 out of 20 had no idea. If asked, they would respond, oh, well, everyone goes to work in the morning and that's why they do it, because everyone else is doing it. Now let's return to our definition of success, who achieves success? The only person who achieves success is the one who is progressively realizing a worthy ideal. It is the one who says, I will become this and then begins to work toward that goal. I'll tell you who successful people are. Success is the teacher who teaches because that's what he or she wants to do. Success is the woman who is a wife and mother because she wanted to become a wife and mother and is doing a good job in that role. Success is the individual managing the gas station because that was his longing, it was what he aspired to do. Success is the talented salesperson who aims to become a top-notch seller and progress and grow with his company. Success is anyone who is consciously executing a planned job because that's what they chose to do deliberately. However, only one in every 20 people do so. That's why nowadays there's no real competition unless we create it for ourselves. Instead of competing, all we need to do is create. For two decades, I tirelessly sought the secret that shapes human destiny. There was a key that I longed to discover, one that would make the future partly predictable. There is a key capable of ensuring someone's success if known and used properly. Well, that key exists and I found it. Have you ever wondered why so many people work hard and honestly never achieving anything specific, while others seem to achieve everything effortlessly? They seem to possess a magic touch. Have you ever heard someone say about someone, everything he touches turns to gold, eh? And have you noticed how a successful person tends to continue on that path, while a failure seems to perpetuate his downfall? Well, that's because of goals. Some of us have goals, others don't. Those who thrive succeed because they have clarity of purpose. It's as simple as that. Imagine a ship leaving a port with its route meticulously planned. The captain and crew know their destination and the estimated time to reach it. They have a defined goal. Now, in 9,999 cases out of 10,000, they will reach their destination. Comment, I will arrive to ensure you'll be on that ship. Now, imagine another ship, identical to the first, but with no crew or captain at the helm. No defined route, no goal, no destination. We simply start the engines and let it go its course. Will you agree with me that if it leaves the port, it will either sink or run aground on some deserted beach as wreckage? It cannot go anywhere for lack of destination and guidance. The same principle applies to every individual. Now let's return to the most intriguing enigma of the world, the narrative I wish to share with you today. Why do some people with goals succeed in life, while those without them fail? Let me share something that, if truly understood, will instantly change your life. If you fully internalize what I'm about to say from this moment on, your existence will never be the same. Suddenly, you will notice that good luck seems to gravitate towards you, that things just fall into place, and henceforth, you will no longer face the problems, worries, inconveniences, and anxieties that you may have experienced before, doubt, fear, well, they will be things of the past. Here is the key to success and failure, we become what we think. Now, let me emphasize this, we become what we think. Throughout history, great sages and masters, philosophers and prophets have diverged on many issues. However, it is only at this point that they unanimously agree. Listen to what Marcus Aurelius, the eminent Roman emperor, stated, the life of a man is molded by his thoughts. 
the Israelites expressed, everything comes to him who waits. Through prolonged reflection I have convinced myself that a human being with a defined purpose will achieve it, and nothing can resist a will that commits even its own existence to its fulfillment. Ralph Waldo Emerson uttered, a man is what he thinks about all day long. William James declared, the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their mental attitudes. And he also said, we need only an imagination to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled, and the thing is done. The moment we accept the wish as an accomplished fact, the subconscious finds means for its realization. It will be rooted so deeply in our habits and emotions that our interests in it will reflect belief. He further mentioned, if you deeply desire a result, you will almost certainly attain it. If you desire to be rich, you will be rich. If you desire to be learned, you will be learned. If you desire to be virtuous, you will be virtuous. But you must sincerely desire these things, wish for them exclusively, without desiring at the same time a hundred other incompatible things. In the Bible, in the book of Mark 9 verse 23, we find these words, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. My esteemed friend, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, expressed this in another way, this is one of the great laws of the universe. It would be very good if man discovered it early in life. But unfortunately many only discover it late in life, and most die without discovering it. This is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, after faith in God. The great law of the universe, summarized and simply stated, is that if you think in negative terms, you will get negative results, if you think in positive terms, you will achieve positive results. It's a simple fact. He continued, stating that this is the foundation of a remarkable law of prosperity and success, in three words, believe and succeed. William Shakespeare expressed a similar sentiment, our doubts are traitors, and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. George Bernard Shaw said, people are always blaming circumstances for what they are. I don't believe in circumstances. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, make them. That was quite evident, wasn't it? We become what we think. Now, it's reasonable that a person who is thinking of a concrete and valuable goal will achieve it because that's what they are focused on. And we become what we think. On the other hand, the man who has no goal, who does not know where he is going, whose thoughts are of confusion, anxiety, fear, and worry, becomes what he thinks. His life becomes one of frustration, fear, anxiety, and worry. And if he thinks of nothing, there is nothing. Now how does this work? Why do we become what we think? Well, let me explain to you how this works, as far as we know now. To do this, I want to tell you about a situation that resembles the human mind. Suppose a farmer has a piece of land, and this land is good for planting. The land gives the farmer a choice, he can plant whatever he wishes in it. The land doesn't care, it's the farmer's decision. Now, remember that we are comparing the human mind to the land because just like the land, the mind doesn't care what you plant in it, it will return what you planted. But it doesn't care what you plant. Now suppose the farmer has two seeds in his hands. One of them is a corn seed and the other is a detura seed, a poisonous plant. He digs two small holes in the land and plants both seeds, one of corn and the other of detura. He covers the holes, waters, and takes care of the land. And what will inevitably happen is that the land will return what was planted, as it is written in the Bible. As you sow, so shall you reap. 
Now remember, the land doesn't care. It will return the poison in as wonderful an abundance as it will return the corn. Thus, the two plants emerge, one of corn and the other of poison. The human mind is incomparably vaster, extraordinary, and mysterious than the earth, yet it functions in a similar manner. It doesn't care about what we plant, whether success, failure, a tangible and valuable goal, or confusion, misunderstanding, fear, anxiety, and so on, but what we plant must return to us. The human mind represents the last great unexplored territory on Earth. It harbors riches beyond our wildest dreams. It will produce anything we wish to sow. Type 888 to ensure that you will plant good things. Now you might ask, if this is true, why don't people use their minds more? Well, I believe they have also found an answer to that. Our mind is a standard equipment since birth. It's free, and things we receive for free we attribute little value to. We value what we pay money for. The paradox lies in the fact that the opposite is true. Everything truly valuable in life comes at no cost. Our minds, our souls, our bodies, our hopes, our dreams, our ambitions, our intelligence, our love for family, for children, for friends, and for country. All these priceless possessions are free, but the things we acquire with money are actually very cheap and can be replaced at any time. An upright man can be completely annihilated and build another fortune. He can do this several times. Even if a house catches fire, we can rebuild it, but the things we obtain for free can never be replaced. The human mind is not used because we take it for granted. Familiarity breeds contempt. It has the ability to perform any task assigned to it, but we generally employ it for minor tasks instead of major and important ones. University research has shown that most of us operate with only about 10% or less of our capacities. So, decide now what you want. Plant your goal in your mind. It's the most crucial decision you've ever made in your entire life. What do you aspire to? Do you want to become an exceptional salesperson, a better contributor in your specific field of work? Do you want to progress in your company, in your community? Do you want to achieve wealth? All you need to do is sow that seed in your mind, nurture it, work steadily towards your goal, and it will become a reality. It cannot just become, it's impossible not to become. You see, this is a law, just like the laws of Sir Isaac Newton, the laws of gravity. If you climb to the top of a building and jump, you will always fall downwards, never upwards. And it's the same with all other laws of nature. They always work, they are inflexible. Think about your goal in a relaxed and positive manner. See yourself, in your mind, already having achieved that goal. See yourself performing the activities you will perform when you reach your goal. We are immersed in an era of sedatives, restlessness, and nerves on edge. In a period where medical research has taken us to a new level of health and longevity, many of us suffer to death, trying to deal with things in our own personal way, without learning some great laws that will take care of everything for us. These things we bring upon ourselves through our habitual way of thinking. Each of us is the total sum of our own thoughts. We are where we are because it is exactly where we truly want to be whether we admit it or not. Each of us must live from the fruit of our thoughts in the future, because what you think today, tomorrow, next month, next year, will shape your life and determine your future. You are guided by your mind and it has very, very much power. And direct that power towards a specific and valuable goal. It's in your hands, you have control of your life, you possess free will. You see, the same law that provides us with success is like a double-edged sword. 
We need to master our thoughts. The same rule that can lead someone to a life of success, wealth, happiness, and everything they ever desired for themselves and their family at the same time can lead them to ruin, depending on how it is used, for good or for ill. That's the general rule established by the great God and made available to every good man like you who has come this far and has the opportunity to employ these teachings to live in harmony with their families. Type E Amen, share this video with whoever you wish and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.